Hello and welcome back to Tesla News. My name is Marian and I'm your host today and I'm covering with you some major updates coming here from Germany. More stuff happening here in Germany that you should know about. So thank you for your support. If you're new, do consider subscribing. And I will start with the email that customers and Tesla owner got in Germany giving all the advice you need in the winter time, what you should be aware of, what kind of information you need to be as efficient as possible with your Tesla. I do find that really nice. Please let me know if you, wherever you're from, got that as well in an English version. Then we are looking into the sales in this year in Germany. We do see Tesla over close to 35,000 cars that they sold. What a growth rate, just look at that. It is almost the twice as much as last year. And what is interesting for you, there are a lot of customers out there waiting for their Tesla in the past or for the next two weeks. So that will be very interesting. I think we can see like a new record coming in in the next two weeks. Then for the European continent, you see for 2021, and thanks to Alex Vogt for those statistics here, um, you do see that we could um, actually hit the milestone of 120,000 cars in Europe. So that would be a nice growth rate to compare to the past two years. Of course, 2020 was not a growth year um, because of the coronavirus. But this um, is not over yet, but still Tesla is growing insanely here in Germany, but as well in Europe. So for the German market, um, to be honest with you, there are as I'm working for a Tesla accessoire company, um, Tessie Supply, I do know through interactions with people that actually many are waiting for deliveries in the next coming two weeks. Now we have the numbers for Germany as well. So you have a comparison for the numbers here. Um, those are 198,000 for the last month. That is not much going on but still you see there's much room to go, but the general car market is much lower than in the past two years. So that means we do have the effects of the supply chain issues. There are some companies like um, Daimler or BMW or Opel um, that had to close some part of the factory or do early Christmas break. Then we have a breaking here from Tesla Adri, who is sharing with us a price increase in Germany from 40 cents to 45 in France from 37 to 40 in Spain from 29 to 36 cent. This are prices in just those three countries. Um, we don't have the numbers yet for the other countries. So the prices for charging in the supercharging network are constantly increasing. Just for your information, that is not an issue from Tesla side. It is just that Tesla doesn't want to lose money. So you do have the issue that there are suppliers in the background that Tesla is working with that provide the electricity to those superchargers. And this, on the other hand, means Tesla has to adapt to those prices as well. Then we do have the supercharging network, just that you get an idea how good the supercharging network in Europe is actually looking. It is really, really dense over here. Then Australia, New Zealand, China and the United States and especially on the East Coast for the United States, a lot of superchargers. So um, Tesla is really expanding here in the next few years. And this map, if we are looking back in two years, will be a small map. Uh, it will look totally different and I'm very excited to see what will happen in the United States. So then looking into um, this email that someone got here, um, Mr. Um, Brandon, um, he got this email here from uh, Alvarez. Um, it is regarding the Ford that he ordered. And it's really frustrating that you need to make a vehicle like an upgrade or um, pay more than $5,000 to get the Ford truck just to be earlier in the line. If not, you have to wait. And this is the way how dealerships are really um, digging their own grave here to say that honestly, because 
this is not the way it should work and this is a lot of frustration and it won't help the um, adaption of the EVs in general, not only in the United States, um, but also in Europe and other continents if you have dealerships charging you so much more money just to get in line and if not they might cancel your reservation that is not a way to communicate with your customers and this is really frustrating and i think it is just a question of time um, as people are sharing that online um, that people will get issues to actually get customers i think dealerships will eventually disappear at some point even though that issue is much much harder to deal with in the United States as in Germany. VW has a big dealerships, by the way, and they have as well a lot of issues with them. So it's for them as well to deal with direct sales to customers. And on the other hand, as well with the dealerships that are struggling to make enough money, especially when it comes to EVs. So there are a lot of struggles, a lot of changes happening in the industry. Then we are looking into China. And by the way, here are some updates I have actually missed. So the thing is, we don't have any 100% proof for that yet, but it would make strategic wise a lot of sense. So we do have this site here constructed. This is based on the size, almost the same size as the battery cell production in Austin. And it is a bit bigger than the cell production in Germany. And just taking this size here, it would make a lot of sense to build a battery cell production as well in China, especially as the strategy was always to build the new battery cells, not only in Austin and Germany, but as well in China. So it could make a lot of sense that Tesla is actually building the same thing, like in Grünheide here in China, to then deliver the new battery cells to its Model Y and then to its um, customers in China. We do know that CATL and other suppliers are also working like Panasonic on the new batteries, but Tesla could be starting to do that by themselves. And they always have said, Elon said that as well in the past, that they are not competing with its own suppliers but they could adapt to say, well, we're gonna deliver to the Model Y performance, the new batteries, and then the LG battery or the LFP batteries are going into the other version. So um, please let me know what you think. The foundation here is very, very complicated compared to other areas on this factory side. So this could be actually a new battery cell production here for the new battery cells. So please let me know what you think about that. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you very much and do consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you.